I've always felt that this part of the drill press, this column here, is kind of a wasted space. So what I came up with is a drill bit organizer. It uses a shadow box method, which tells me exactly what I'm missing so that if I have a missing spot, I know to look for that bit to put it away. I've also got all the bits that I'll ever use as well as spade bits on this side. On this side, I've got all my brad point drill bits as well as a drill bit organizer. Well, let me show you how I built this. To get started, you're gonna to need to have two blocks that are three inches thick and six inches wide by six inches tall. Because I don't have wood that's that thick, I'll be gluing together layers. These are three quarter inch thick. They're six inches by six inches. You need to be about three inches altogether. This will be just barely over three inches. I cut all these from a three quarter inch by six inch by 52 inch board. I made mine out of maple, but it really doesn't matter. You can make yours out of pine and you'd be just fine. On the web page that this video is connected to, there are two different sheets that you can print out. There's also an SVG file as well as a light burn file if you want to do this with CNC or with a laser engraver. All six files are in one package. The JPEGs are the one that you're gonna to want to print off. We'll come in here and we just wanna cut around that black line. Now I did forget to mention that if you only wanna do one of these, it, that's perfectly fine. Now we want all of our grains to be going this way on all of our pieces. What we'll do now is we'll glue the, this to the top piece on each side. You can use Mod Podge or just wood glue if you, to attach these. And it's just adding a little bit of a layer to the top of this and making sure that these are straight on top. Now I already went ahead and laser engraved these, so I will not be gluing these on. But everything from this point on works the same way with the paper or with the engraving. I'll also mention if you just want to do these all together in one piece, you don't have to cut them in half like this. You can just glue the two pieces of paper together on top of the blocks. You'll want to make sure that you alternate the grain here. I'm going to go ahead and glue all four pieces together. If you are starting out with a board that you bought from the store, make sure that you sand each side before you add the glue. If you've seen my bite size, the glue will not penetrate into the wood if it's been cut within a, a few days even. It, the wood will become difficult for it to get inside of. So make sure that you give it a little bit of a sanding before you glue them all together. Now, so I don't damage the face of this, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple pieces of plywood here, and I'll clamp to that. I'm not really worried about the back side as much. Now the first one that I did, I didn't add salt, and it was moving around a little bit. So this I'm just going to add a couple grains, very, very little. Okay, we'll give this some time to dry and we'll come back. I've gone ahead and sanded the sides and I'm ready for the next part, which is going to be to drill out each one of these holes. A few years ago, I made the shadow box style Orzner bit holder and I want to use that same kind of idea with the blocks. To go with these blocks, I decided to buy a brand new set. I'll have a link to this in the description. These are only $50 for this entire set. I'm really happy with it so far. These are carbide blades, but the idea for this is that I want to not go all the way down to the tips when I drill these out, but I do want to go a little ways in, so maybe about like that. That'll give me a little bit that I can grab onto the blades and pull it out. Of course, when we drill out any of these holes, we want to make sure that we go with the largest size first. Now, for instance, this two inch bit will go inside of the two inch mark here. I'll drill down and then I want to drill out the rest of this larger size right here. The larger size for this bit is a little over a half of an inch, so I, I definitely want to go a little bit bigger than that. I just want this to be able to slide in and not fight it when it goes in. Now when I get down to the smaller ones, I'm not going to want to go with that half inch size. I will do it accordingly to make sure that they slide in and that they don't fall into the second part. While I use Forzner bits for this side, on this side, I'm going to be using a set of spade bits. And all these markings up here, I'll be using brad point drill bits. So let's get started with this and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to be using a 9 16th, which is just slightly bigger than the half inch. I'll drill the rest of the way down, which is going to be the length of the Forzner bit. It's also important that you make sure that you lock your table because your table will actually drop down and it'll give you a different angle than if it's locked. Okay, and here we go. My first one fits all the way in and it's easy for me to be able to pull out like that. 
We'll go on to the next one. A trick I did find out to getting each one of these about the same height or relatively the same height from the last hole is when you put a new Forstner bit in for the smaller hole, you go to the last hole, set your depth on your drill press, and then move over to the next hole. That seemed to help me out a lot and made it go a little bit faster. As you can see, this is where I'm gonna stop with my Forstner bits. Once you get below 5 eighths, Forstner bits are pretty much useless. They clog, they're just junk. So from here on out, I'll be using my larger brad point bits to drill out. Now I don't want to go all the way through and I'll probably wanna run this up and down a little bit to make the hole maybe a little bit wider so it's easier to slide in. Now to do the spade bits, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I want them to stick out like this so they're easy to pull out. The rest of the hole will be a little bit larger than the shaft here, and I do wanna make sure that they go all the way through the back. Now I'll go ahead and drill the rest of these and we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, now I went ahead and drilled these out and honestly, they are still a little difficult to get in. So when I drill these out now, I'm gonna start with a hole over here and I'm just gonna use the larger bit to the right of it as the hole. So I'll use the 9 30 seconds here, 5 16 here, all the way down, just using the next size up. And I think that that should work. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So again, I've got my 9 30 seconds bit in here and I'm gonna to go to the next size down, which is 17 60 fourths. And I'll drill this out. And we'll go from there. So now if I try 1764 a bit, it fits in there really easily. We'll try both ways. Yep, so we'll keep doing that same kind of pattern until we get all these done. I'll take my 1764 a bit and I'll use it on my quarter inch hole. That fits in there really good. I'll keep that pattern going. Now, as you can see, I went ahead and drilled all these out. Most of them work really well. These all work phenomenal because each of these holes is at least a 64th of an inch bigger. These two bits of all these bits here, I'm having a problem with. This is a half inch and this is a 7 16th inch bit. What I'm gonna end up doing is adding a little bit of water inside the holes, which will allow it to expand a little bit. And then I'll drill them out again, which will help to bring that size down. If we go back to the Forzner bit set that I've had for a long time, you'll see that I've got this at an angle. It was kind of by accident that I discovered that, that I liked it this way. But the good thing about it is, is that I can see it from this angle or from a lot of different other angles. So with these, I'd like to do the same thing. I'm gonna to come to the back side here and I'm gonna go three and three eighths from the bottom and then just draw a diagonal across here. Again, these are three and an eighth inch wide. So you might have to change that a little bit for years, but I found that three and three eighths will work well because it won't cause a conflict with the spade bits back here. And it's just really enough that I can see everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this on its side. Again, I'm gonna go three eighths from the bottom and I'm gonna carry that across to the front point here. So if I look at this, it looks like it's all lined up and it's gonna work just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the bandsaw and cut it off. When we bring it over here, you can see that it's a lot easier to see the bits. It is just at a slight angle. I think that that'll work really well. At this point, if you don't plan on adding this to the column of your drill press, you can stop right here. Like I said earlier, you can combine those two sheets to make one solid piece and just set it off to the side. From this point on, I'm going to show you how I'm gonna add this to the column of my drill press. I'm gonna put this up here. Guess where my rod's gonna go through. It's gonna be a quarter inch rod, so it's gonna go about like this, and then back here on this upper corner here. So once I get it to where I think I want it, kind of make it an approximate spot. And these are my two spots right here. I'll go ahead and move over just a little bit to cut that quarter inch space out. It's just gonna be a quarter inch box that will cut out on the table saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I think I've got this the right depth and everything. We'll see how it works.
Now I thought before I sanded everything up and attached the bars and everything that I would add a die to the top. I'm using curly maple here, so I wanna show it off a little bit. So I'm gonna use a little bit of red dye. I'm gonna set this aside and we'll come back and we'll, we'll take care of the rest of it. I added a second coat in the middle and it's now dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 100 grit sandpaper and clean it all up. We'll see what happens. You'll take the column of your drill press and you'll add both sides pieces and that will give you the length of the bolt that you need. And then you're gonna to wanna to go maybe, I don't know, a half inch over that. You'll need probably a 36 inch quarter inch rod. I cut my rod in half and I'll cut each section from that. That way I keep one end with the threading intact. Now we're gonna to want to epoxy one side inside of each block. So I've got two bars, two blocks. One side is gonna be epoxied in like this. And then the other side is gonna get the other bar like this. It's really important that the threaded side that we cut is going to be inside the block like this. So on my first side, I'll flip this over. Again, I have the cut side right here. I'm gonna use a little bit of epoxy. I've got a baby bottle nipple here. Works really well. I'll go ahead and put this in here like that. Now on this side, I'll flip it over. We'll go ahead and give this some time to set before we do anything else. Now the next thing that I want to add is a size gauge. I have three different cases and this always gets lost in one of them. So I'm gonna have it here off to the side and I'm gonna use a couple magnets to attach it. And then the last thing that I wanna do, because this quarter inch spade bit will slide all the way through, I wanna add a magnet on the back that will just keep it from falling out. I'll just put a little bit of epoxy on that as well as the two over here. We'll add a piece of tape here to keep it in place. We'll come back when all of this is cured. I've gone ahead and mixed some polyurethane and paint thinner. This is a little bit more than a three to one ratio of polyurethane, but I wanted to make it really thin because I want it to really penetrate into the wood. Curly maple has a lot of depth that you can reach if you really cut this thin. Another good thing about cutting this is I can use these really thick silicone bristles and I don't have to worry about it leaving behind any kind of marks as far as paintbrush marks. After the poly was cured, I lightly sanded it and then brought it to the buffer and used some aluminum oxide compound to give the surface a mirror look. And then I overdid it by adding Danish oil. It's really worth it though, as you can see right here that the chateauiance in the curly maple just explodes. Now we're gonna attach this to the drill press, which is very simple. One side goes on one side and the other goes on the other side. As you can see, I've got a knurled thumb knob here. You could use a wing nut, that would work fine, but we're just gonna twist both sides so that it tightens up everything against the post here. If it ever has any problem in the future, I can always add some strips of tracker runner down the side of this, but I really don't think it's gonna be a problem. And here we are completed with this. Now I know some are probably thinking, is this ever gonna interfere with the work right here? I will keep track of this. I will put in the description down below if I've ever had any problems with it. The thing that I like about this is that if I ever have something that's a little bit bigger that I need to have that space, I can always just turn those two thumb knurled knobs and pull the, it apart with just one pull, will take it off. So I'm not really worried about this but again, I wanna make sure that I'm honest with everyone that does watch this. I am gonna keep track of it and see if this is just something that becomes really cumbersome and annoying. If this is ever a problem here, I can always set it right here 
which is right next to my drill press. So again, you don't have to have this on your drill press. I just think it's easier because it's right where I'm working and I know to put things away as soon as I'm done. But that's what I've got. Let me know if this is something that you might build yourself, if this is interesting, in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.